All right, so in this video, we're going to be uh, continuing and wrapping up our sort of coverage of Newton's laws by doing some practice problems using his three laws that we've uh, discussed previously. So in this problem, we have a block moving down a ramp. It should be noted that this is with constant velocity, and that's because it's being counteracted by some frictional force, which has the uh, basically the coefficient of friction mu k. And what we want to do in this example is solve for mu k in terms of theta. And we start, of course, as we always do, by drawing the forces acting on the object. In this case, we have, you know, gravity, and then there's friction pulling it up the ramp, as well as a normal force from the ramp acting perpendicular to the ramp. And now, we have to move on to our second step, which is to choose our coordinate system. And now you may say, well, you just go straight like this. But I'm going to propose a different coordinate system. What if instead of using straight up and down and left right, we instead use a coordinate system parallel and perpendicular to the ramp because friction and normal would then line up with uh, the two coordinate axes. Well, you might say that makes it a bit difficult to use gravity. Well, I'm going to show you a very useful trick that you can use for all of these sort of ramp problems where you have some angle theta involved in a ramp. Uh, basically a derivation that will help you throughout uh, basically the rest of your physics career. So you have uh, two components on mg acting to form this mg vector. And what you have to realize is that this angle theta is also this angle theta in here. So you have a theta here, which means we can break up these two vectors into components mg cosine theta and mg sine of theta. Now, from here, all we have to do is uh, sum the forces in the x direction and sum the forces in the y direction like we did in the previous problems. And we know that they're both zero because the block isn't accelerating, it's moving at constant velocity. So when we look at the forces, let's just arbitrarily call that the x-axis and call this the y-axis up here. If we look at the forces on the x-axis, we have mg sine of theta is acting this way, parallel to this x-axis. So you have, you know, mg sine of theta, and then friction is acting opposite, so minus friction. Similarly, if you look at the y-axis, you have the normal force coming out along this y, and then you have the mg cosine theta acting in the opposite direction, so it's a negative sign, uh, but still along the y-axis. So moving both of these over, we get that mg sine of theta equals the frictional force, and the normal force equals mg cosine of theta. But wait, we've previously derived an expression for friction in terms of uh, the normal force. And we know that friction is mu, the coefficient of friction, times the normal force. And because we have a substitution for the normal force, we can get that mg sine of theta equals mu k times the substitution for normal, which is mg cosine of theta. We can then cancel out mg because they appear on both sides and get that mu k equals sine theta over cosine theta. And from trig, we know that that is tangent of theta. And this whole uh, rearranging of the coordinate axis thing for mg is useful for all these problems involving ramps. Basically, you have to realize that uh, gravity is going to break up into two components. One is sort of uh, down the ramp, and that will always be mg sine of theta, and the other will be perpendicular. We'll just put a little perpendicular sign in there uh, to the ramp, and that will always be mg cosine theta. So by memorizing these two equalities, you can greatly reduce the number of steps necessary to solve an inclined ramp problem in the future.
Moving on now, we're going to be looking at accelerating systems, specifically uh, what's known as Atwood's machine. Basically, you have a pulley right here holding two weights that are connected over the top by some sort of rope or string. And so, as always, we'll start by drawing our free body diagrams, or FBDs. And in this case, we'll draw one for each object. So you have tension in the string pulling upwards, and then its weight, in this case, which is just M2 times G. And it's a very similar FBD for the other one. You have the tension in the string pulling upwards, and M1 times G pulling downwards. Now to find the acceleration, we have to uh, designate whether that acceleration will be positive or negative. So in this case, we're going to say that M2 is uh, greater than, much greater than M1, and that the standard positive direction is going to be counterclockwise like it is with most rotating reference frames. And now with that said, uh, all we have to do is basically sum the forces, and because these two are attached via a string, they're going to experience the same acceleration, and that's where the key is going to come in. Basically, we're going to have two equations with two unknowns. In this case, we sum the forces on two, which is uh, m2g minus the tension in the string, and then when you sum the forces on uh, object number one, you get t minus m1g. And both of these are going to equal uh, the acceleration they're experiencing times their respective mass, in this case m2 and then m1. Now from here, all you have to do is uh, solve for the tension in terms of one, and then substitute it in. So we'll just say that uh, T equals M1A minus, or no, plus M1G from this equation down here. And then plugging that into the equation for the sum of the forces on number two, we get that M2G minus M1A plus M1G, because that's our substitution for the tension in the string equals m2a. Now from here, you just distribute that negative sign in, you get m2g minus m1a minus m1 times g equals m2 times a, and then you just move uh, all the like terms basically onto the same side. So you take these two a terms, make sure they're both on the right, and you get m2g minus m1g equals uh, m2 plus m1 a basically, you can factor out that A, or as a final answer you get A equals M2G minus M1G over M2 plus M1, and that's our acceleration for this Atwoods machine. Next we're going to go over a typical uh, elevator problem. So in this case we're going to go with an elevator that's experiencing constant acceleration. Obviously most elevators uh, experience acceleration for a short time, then move you at constant velocity, otherwise you'd experience uh, some extreme g-forces, which we'll demonstrate in a bit. And our objective here is basically to find your weight in this accelerating elevator. And the way we do that, of course, is by starting with an FBD. You have the normal force from the floor, and your weight, mg. Now you sum the forces. Oh, uh, that's right, we have to define a coordinate system. We're going to define uh, upwards as positive, and because these are all acting in one direction, the x and, I mean, the y axis is the only one that matters. Uh, but from here, we sum the forces, which is uh, the normal force minus your weight, and set that equal to ma, basically your acceleration that you will be undergoing. Now, uh, from here, uh, what is the weight that you really feel? let's say you had a scale below your feet that was measuring your weight, uh, what that would feel is really, right here, I would feel the normal force that you're exerting. It would feel actually the opposite pair of the normal force. So uh, the normal force is the force of the floor on you, and what the, the scale measures is the force of you on the floor. So to solve for that normal force, we get that uh, the normal force is mg plus ma, or n equals g plus a times m. And this leads us, oh, that's all in newtons, by the way. Uh, this leads us to some interesting conclusions. For example, what if a is negative g? In other words, this elevator is falling downwards with an acceleration of negative g. 
Well, then, then this term right here becomes zero, and you become uh, weightless. And this is sort of how uh, astronauts on the International Space Station and uh, other spacefaring craft experience this weightlessness. It's not that they're not experiencing gravity. It's rather that everything around them is experiencing the same g value. So relative to this elevator, you can sort of float around because there's no normal force acting on you. Now as our last sort of practice problem, we're going to do, once again, another inclined ramp. Except for this time, it's not going to be uh, static. Basically, we're going to have an accelerating system. And so what do we do? Well, the first thing we do is obviously draw our FBD. But hold on. Drawing an FBD for these two objects will get a bit redundant. Uh, basically, uh, you have, you know, one, two, three, because there's friction, four arrows on this one, two on this one, and that's a lot of forces to account for. So what if instead we treat this whole system as though it were, uh, you know, one object just being affected by all those forces? So what we do is treat it as though there's blocks one and two on a rope, except for there's gravity accelerating this one this way, and gravity accelerating one uh, with mg sine theta that way, and friction uh, resisting that motion, etc. So what we do is treat this as one whole system, and then draw the two blocks. In this case, you have m2g pulling the system around and down this way. You have m1g times the sine of theta. Remember from our shortcut with the uh, ramp earlier, or in the last video rather, pulling it around this way. And you also have friction, which is another arrow, resisting the motion, once again pulling it this way. We're saying that the acceleration occurs in this direction. So now, all we have to do is sum the forces instead of in, you know, all different coordinate systems and whatnot. We just sum the forces in one direction, or in one dimension rather, and set that equal to the mass we're accelerating. So we have m2g minus m1g sine of theta minus, we'll just write mu k times uh, the normal force, which is mg or m1g cosine theta equals the mass we're accelerating, which is both masses, m1 and m2, times acceleration. And then from there, to solve for the acceleration, uh, all you have to do is divide through by this mass. So you end up with acceleration equals m2g minus m1g sine of theta minus mu uh, k m1g cosine theta all over the sum of the two masses m2 and m1. And that's how you get your acceleration. And then if you measure the acceleration, you can solve for uh, the coefficient of friction etc. Now that concludes our discussion of Newton's laws. In the next set of videos we're going to be looking at energy, work, power, and uh, the relationships between them.